Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. I think there's some authentic music here. This case, Belisario Lopez from Cuba, way back when. Just listen to it for a minute, I'll show you where I'm going. If you want to understand me and where I'm coming from, you got to understand part of me, which is musical. And I grew up listening to this music, not in my house, my father thought it was horrible music. In fact, when I first played jazz music in the house, he threw the stereo in the... He ripped it out of the wall and wanted to throw it in the gutter. He said, what do you listen to that junky music? <laughs> I'll never forget as long as I lived when I started listening to uh, all sorts of jazz music, man. That was such a, an affront to his his sense of uh, whatever. Who knows what he, what he, what he thought, but he, did, he didn't go for it. I remember listening to some of the great jazz music in the f- late 50s. I was addicted to it. And when I would play it, <clears throat> God forbid what went on in that house. Then my mother, God rest her soul, brought home a hi-fi it was a blonde hi-fi set. He got so angry that she even bought it without going through him. And I bought the records. You know, they were red and all sorts of colors, and I used to listen to it. But I grew up listening to this music, and there's a reason I'm telling you about it. And the reason I'm telling you about it is because the music had something to it that both excited me, got me out of my provincial world, brought me into another realm, exposed me to good and bad, and I mean good and bad, because the musical world was filled with some great musicians and also filled with some authentically bad people. Drug dealers, uh, drug addicts, you know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying to you is this is a part of my life. Now, I want to play one other piece of music. The next one is who? That was Belisario Lopez. Who's the next one? Don't worry. We'll do politics when I get around to it. Believe me, you'll get politics. Why am I playing this music? To show you I'm not Fox News. That's number one. Number two, to show you that the show is created entirely by me. And number three, uh, to tell you a certain uh, couple of things today. I'll start with some questions for the meat and potatoes crowd. And I know what I'm going to get right away. The first question is, who do you trust more, Putin or Obama? Now, I know what I'm going to get. 99% will say they'd rather Putin be president than Obama. I know that. So please don't call with that. See, I put it up on Facebook last night. Who do you trust more, Putin or Obama? Something along those lines. Overwhelmingly. My Facebook followers trust Putin more than Obama for good reason. And I don't have to say why. Obama's the least trustworthy man in the history of the world. Then I was going to ask you, how do you feel about white student unions? That's because there's every kind of ethnic student union in the world now on the increasingly segregated campuses created by the diversity folk, mainly by the white communist professors who want polarization and hatred. They're not there to teach. They're there to divide and conquer. It's the white commie professors who have destroyed the universities. So they let the Black uh, Lives Matter crowd take over to the exclusion of everybody else. So now some people are reacting and creating what they call someone who represents their interests, the white student union. I'm going to talk about that. But I want to get to a bigger topic, and that's Hillary Clinton and the email scandal without getting bored because it's a boring topic. We all know it's a setup to fail. I told you this for years. It was going to blow up in your face if you follow Trey Gowdy. Do you remember the, the hearings, the Magazi hearings? Remember how you prayed to God finally some truth would be told? You remember you thought Trey Gowdy was the real McCoy? And you remember how he fizzled out like a wet firecracker? And at the end of it, Hillary came out reigning the new queen of the American political landscape. It was all because the Republicans set it up to go that way, in my opinion. So now we have one last chance to get to the bottom of who this woman really is, as if we don't really know. And that is in the hands of the FBI director. An article came out today in The Hill entitled, I don't know their title, but it was about, I don't know how they call it, uh, I forget their title, I don't have it in front of me, but it was about how he, her future, and the presidential election is really in his hands, the FBI director James Comey. They said FBI director James Comey is the pivotal figure in the 2016 presidential race that no one is talking about. Comey is a Republican appointed by Obama, did you hear that? A Republican appointed by Obama who enjoys a stellar reputation on both sides of the aisle, who was investigating Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server as Secretary of State. Now, they say the controversy surrounding her private email account remains an Achilles heel. Okay? We also know the GOP-created House Benghazi Committee flopped. 
when Clinton came out smelling like roses, and that was not because the hearing failed to produce anything newsworthy about her use of a private server. It's because there was no hearing at all. It was a coronation. So now the FBI has the final say on whether Clinton test uh, on whether Clinton did anything wrong or illegal. And whatever the verdict is, they write, both parties will have to accept it because James Comey is in many ways untouchable. That's interesting because of the show The Untouchables about Elliot Ness. The 54-year-old FBI chief confirmed by the Senate to a 10-year term on a 93-to-1 vote. This summer, by the way, is known for his independence and aggressive prosecutions. Now, before I go into the details of why I trust Mr. Comey, I will tell you that it was not... But yesterday that I said on this show before this article came out that there's only one man in the Obama administration I trust. Did I say that or not, Jim? I said it on this show yesterday that there's only one member of the Obama administration that I have any faith in, and that's James Comey. And you know why I said it? Because he's the only one to dare stand up to that fraud in the White House and say, what do you mean taking all the Syrian refugees because they're all going to be vetted? Comey stood out from the pack and said, we can't vet all of them. It's impossible. Did you know that? The CIA is a wholly owned subsidiary of one of the Girl Scouts in the White House. Can you believe that the CIA would prostitute itself like this under this administration by saying climate change is a greater threat to our survival than ISIS is? Can you believe that things have come to this level? Well, it, they have, and yet there's only one man who I think stands up as independent, that's James Comey. So I did some research. And I didn't know who appointed him. I just know that I trusted him because of the things he was saying. Now he's a registered Republican. He's six foot eight in height. He has five children. In fact, his height is interesting to me. Since yesterday, I talked about a six foot eight boxer who beat uh, 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 Vladimir Klitschko the other night. I thought that was interesting. Two guys six eight, <laughs> one day in a row. I mean, yesterday, I talked about the boxer who beat Klitschko was six eight. Now I'm talking about the FBI director who is six foot eight, who I trust, right? So why else do I trust him? He's the grandson of a police officer in Yonkers, New York. That's great to me. Anyone whose father or grandfather was a cop in New York has to be good. That's true, 100% true, despite what the uh, police haters out there, despite those who hate the police would have to say, I still trust cops. And so we go on and on. And there's something more. When Comey testified back when, he said in May of 2014 that army psychiatrist, the Muslim, Nidal Hassan, who killed 13 people at the Fort Hood Army Base in 09, he said that, he, that, that, that that rat was inspired by Al-Qaeda, while others in the Obama administration wouldn't say any such thing. They said it was workplace violence. Did you know that? This propagandist administration of ours wouldn't even say that Nidal Hassan was inspired by Al-Qaeda. This statement alone tells me everything I need to know about the current investigations. The investigations will be done, and they will be done right. Comey is not afraid to stake out his position, regardless of which way the political winds blow or who is being investigated. This should provide comfort to the taxpayers and voters and fuel sleepless nights for the targets of the investigation, said Morgan Wright, a cybersecurity expert who uh, knows the situation very well. And so we'll talk about that in a minute without going into many more details. And then I'll get back to the Cuban music that I'm playing. And then we'll go on to some other topics such as who do you trust more, Putin or Obama? How do you feel about white student unions? Uh, and now I want to depart on a slight note here. You know my show has been on the air for 21 years. Not in this time slot, not on these exact stations, but I've been a broadcaster since 1994. And I have a very large audience, a very, very large audience that's very loyal, incidentally, that goes back a very long time. Right now, my show is heard on major stations across America, including WABC in New York, where my ratings are superb, WMAL in Washington, D.C. And this is where I want to pause for a minute. You can check it out if you're in the industry. My ratings on WMAL indicate that I have a 3.2 share of all people listening to radio at the time that I'm on the radio, 3 to 5 in the afternoon. Which makes this show one of or the most listened to day part talk show in the Washington, D.C. area. Which means that anyone who has a brain, who is looking for news and wants to hear kind of a raw, independent view turns to Michael Savage. 
of course they get their news from the Washington Post and the New York Times, and they turn on CNN and they listen to Jake Tapwater, but they take all of it with a grain of, of salt. When they listen to me, what do you think they're hearing? Why do they take you a few minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes out of their day to listen to me in that city or your city? Why? What are they hearing? They're hearing a guy who's sort of salt of the earth, old school, like their father or their grandfather, somebody from their life who they trusted, who they could count on to give them the unvarnished, unvarnished truth, meaning how they see the world. That's why they're listening. Now, now let's go back to the music I was playing. Uh, Jim, what's the next piece that we have of this Cuban music, this authentic Cuban music? Did you know that? Do you remember? Oh, turn it off now. Now it's distracting me. Okay, so we're going to talk about soul for a minute. When I listen to this music, I hear a singer who has soul, duende, right? Now, what do I mean by that? It means that there's something about it that touches you on a different level. Something that touches your soul when you listen to their voice. And it's what's missing in the world today. What's missing in the world today is soul. All we have is hate and lust. I want you to think about what I just said. All drama produced by Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Weinstein, none of it has any soul in it. It's got hate and it's got lust. That's all it's got. The actors and actresses, no soul. All they can portray, hate and lust. That's all they can portray. But I listen to music like this and I hear the... The, the part of the human being that's missing in America today. And I say to myself, lo maximo que buena melodia, meaning, wow, that's beautiful. That's the melodia. Que buena pechaga, gracias por poneros a escuchar. Beautiful music, great to listen to, right? So that's why I'm playing it for you. Where, where has the soul gone in America? What happened to the soul? Not all, forget about the politicians. They're not the sun, moon, and stars of my life. They never have been, they never will be. But whatever happened to soul in music, there is no soul in music anymore. What is the music? What is the music of America? And you say, well, wh why are you going off on a tangent about music right now? Why not go off on a tangent about music right now? We have no soul in America. It was killed when the computerized age uh, uh, took over this country. You look at the average person of any age, and they're staring into an object in their hand. They're feeling nothing. They're seeing nothing. They hear no evil. They see no evil. And they speak no evil. I'll be back to talk more about soul on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. What am I talking about today? I don't know. You have to be an artist to understand anything that I've said so far. I'm afraid if you're a straight-line, two-dimensional radio listener, you probably turned the dial already and don't know what I'm talking about. But it's all related in my own way. What I'm talking about is the death of truth, the death of honesty, the death of soul, perhaps not only in America, but the entire world. And I want to go back again to what I said when I started. When I grew up, there was a great emphasis on, well, we'd go to like a, la a jazz club or a Latin club, and in my crowd, people would say, listen to that music, it's got soul. And then we were told that, uh, well, we were told that uh, soul music came from the African-American community. It largely did. Not entirely. Not entirely, but it did. And we came to depend upon that music as a link to our own feelings in many ways. So follow where I'm going. Now, speed the clock up. You get shysters who come along, complete and total, Machiavellian monsters, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, who capitalize on the sensitive liberal whites view of black people and sell themselves as the authentic, honest person, and they turn out to be complete and total louts, in it only for themselves, in it only for what they can take down, total and absolutely unreliable, uh, leave it at that. Now let's move it forward to Obama. Obama gets a lot of white voters who say, you know what? Man, look at Bush. He lied. There were no WMDs, those white people. You can't trust them. Halliburton, Cheney. Yeah, all right, so let's vote for a black man because he's trustworthy. That's how Obama sold himself. Well, I rest my case. Another one who used race to get ahead. And here we are searching for someone authentic to save us from this lie, the big lie. When I come back, we'll talk more about that. 